We got SEAL Team 6 smoke these pirates. Jessica Buchanan hostage rescue. Really excited to check this one out. So yeah, let's get into it. The Navy SEALs clenched their fists as they heard Jessica Buchanan desperately pleading for her life. The American teacher had participated in a demining project in Somalia before being kidnapped by several pirates. Now, she I think I may have heard something about this. I didn't see too much on it, but yeah, I think I think um, I seen like a tweet or something like that about this. She lay sick and starving somewhere in the desert, defenseless something. against the whims of her heavily armed captors. The operators of the Jesus. famous SEAL Team 6 would do everything to save her. But one bad piece of news followed the next. Gale force winds would force the sailors to jump out of the aircraft at more than twice the wind speeds of what would have normally canceled the jump. Oh, wow. On top of that, they were in the middle of a solar storm, which could block radio communications to support units for hours. The SEALs would have to prove that they were among the best before they even touched the ground. Any other no mission way. would have been delayed by at least a day. But the warriors knew Jessica didn't have those 24 hours. Wow. And so they donned their parachutes, checked their oxygen tanks, and then jumped into the unknown darkness and one of the most daring hostage rescues ever. Jessica Buchanan was 32 years old and living with her husband in one of the safer areas of Somalia. Together with her Danish colleague, Paul Thisted, she worked for a large aid organization educating children about the dangers of anti-personnel mines that were widespread throughout the country. Uh, On her next assignment, she had to travel dangerously close to the so-called Green Line. You know what? I am very surprised. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I will be very surprised within the next five years if there's not, like, a Netflix documentary or movie about this. Because just by this intro... It's like it would actually be a really good documentary. An invisible really line good. behind which lay the areas controlled by Islamists. The security situation in the Horn of Africa was already tense as it was, with bomb attacks and small skirmishes between rival tribes occurring almost regularly. However, Jessica had not come to Africa to hide behind walls, so she decided to conduct the anti-mine training anyway. At first, no everything seemed to go without incident. But on October 25th, 2011, the day of their return trip, everything was about to change for the two humanitarian workers. Oh, wow. It was the day of their return home. The first thing that struck Jessica as suspicious was her driver. Instead of their usual chauffeur, a completely unknown man was sitting in the Land Cruiser who was supposed to take them to the airport. Her Danish colleague, however, seemed to be in a hurry and climbed into the passenger seat unimpressed which is why Jessica stopped worrying. Okay. Then, after only 10 minutes of driving, it happened. A massive car forced the convoy to an abrupt halt. Nearly 30 men with AK-47 assault rifles jumped out of several vehicles, banging on the Land Cruiser's windows and yelling orders in a language Jessica didn't understand. Before she could even realize what was happening to her. Man, that would be so scary, bro. Like, you're in a car and 30 men get out with, like, eight, like, weapons and, eight, you know what I mean? Banging on the... Bro. One of the pirates pointed his gun to her head while her security advisor was violently dragged from the vehicle. A heavily armed man sat down in the vacant seat and gave orders to Jessica's driver, who willingly hit the gas and showed who he was really working for. Right. It wasn't long before they stopped again and switched vehicles amid loud shouting from the pirates. The whole thing seemed very well planned, although the kidnappers had obviously consumed too much cot, a plant common in Africa which acts similar to amphetamines. Uh. After the pirates stopped in the middle of nowhere, Jessica and Paul had to prepare their own execution, only to be sent back to the car just before their tragic end. The pirates didn't care at all about the lives of the relief workers, but in order to collect the highest possible ransom, they needed their hostages unharmed. For them, it was fun to mock the powerlessness of the West on the other side of the world. Wow. Jessica and Paul, meanwhile, were living their nightmare. They could do nothing as they were at the mercy of the barbarians and didn't even know if anyone had noticed their disappearance. But See, Washington that's what I would be thinking. Like, good on America picking it up, though, because, like, you know what America's like? One of their own, they're going to town, and we're about to get into this video, like, really, you know really deeply with the uh, SEAL Team 6. But, like, 
you know, if I was in that moment, I'd be thinking, I'm just a nobody. You know what I mean? They're not going to pick it up. They're not going to, you know what I mean? But King was not uh, good only job. aware of the abduction of the humanitarian workers, it had already initiated first countermeasures. Of course, Jessica's it's America, aid organization man. had notified the American embassy in Nairobi immediately after the assault, which in turn informed the FBI. From here, phone calls were made to family members to reassure them and dissuade them from acting rashly. Even before the end of the day, high-ranking officials briefed U.S. President Barack Obama, and while the pirates were preparing wow. to contact authorities, Jessica Buchanan was already a top priority at the White House. Wow. Paul Fisted later recounted that the best thing that could have happened to him was to be kidnapped with an American. Both hostages mm. and pirates were soon to find out what that meant. Almost three. Hey, you don't mess with the Americas, man. I, like, I'm trying to think right now. You know, if I got like kidnapped in this situation, I wouldn't. I wouldn't think the UK would even. I don't even think they would even bat an eyelid. I ain't gonna lie. Like, America's different, bro. Like. Someone in America, like this situation right here, they're not going to let it slide. Not one bit. But UK, they might have some better things to do. Three months lie. later, Jessica was still in captivity. Good news was that she was still alive. Bad news was that despite slow negotiations, no agreement could be made for a ransom, as the pirates had even refused $1.5 million. Huh? Enough money that each of them would be set up for at least 30 years. How much did they want? Every day, Jessica fought hunger, heat, and the constant fear that the kidnappers would harm her. As if all of that wasn't bad enough, so a urinary tract infection had spread through her body, and in Ooh. the worst case scenario, it could be fatal. In a final video message to Western authorities, she joined Paul in begging for their lives and a quick payment of the ransom. Otherwise, she would either die from her infection or fall victim to the whims of pirates drugged with cot. That night, Jessica gazed up at the brightly lit starry sky and prayed. Unbeknownst to her, her prayers were answered when 10,000 miles away, we 24 go. cell phones suddenly rang. The men picking up the phones had long beards and were covered with tattoos. Some of them had the stature of a bear, while others looked like hardened marathon runners. But they all had one thing in common, their aura of absolute calm, self-confidence, and professionalism. Right. They were all part of the famous SEAL Team 6, who had just been alerted for a hostage rescue. So badass, man. Over the next man. few weeks, SEAL Team 6's Blue Squadron trained day and night to rescue Jessica, her pleading voice from the video message always in the back of their minds. The warriors had hunted gruesome men all over the world, but when it came to the lives of women and children, they were especially motivated. Right, of course. On January of course. 25th, 2012, the time had finally come. President Obama himself had given the green light for the hostage rescue. 24 of the best warriors the U.S. had to offer would risk their lives to try to free both hostages unharmed. Amazing. Their plan was to parachute over Somalia and then approach the pirate camp on foot so as not to alert the enemy with loud noises. At the U.S. operations base in Djibouti, around 500 miles from Jessica's location, everything military-related which was useful in some way was gathered. At this point, the total operation cost was already well over $100 million. That was how huh? much America was willing to spend to save just one citizen. Wait! How? Yo, someone in the comment section has to total up how this came up to 100 million. How? 100 mil? Huh? With final preparations completed, the SEALs boarded their C-130 transport aircraft and took off for Mogadishu. Remarkably, the pilots themselves had only just arrived and had been on a nine-hour flight right before, but performed their job just like business as usual. All eyes, including those of the president, who was monitoring the operation via live feed, were now on the hostage rescue. As it turned out later, the kidnappers wanted to change their position on exactly this night, but had eaten spoiled meat and therefore ended up staying put. On the other side, however, no a violent solar storm erupted, which hit the Earth's magnetic field so hard that radio waves, and thus radio communications with other support units, were disrupted. Meaning, in a worst-case scenario, no quick reaction force, no situation reports, and no close air support. 
Wow, imagine that happening on the night of the hostage rescue. On top of that, wind speeds were more than double what would have canceled a regular mission. But the rescue of Jessica Buchanan was not a regular mission, and every one of the 24 men on board was willing to take that extra risk. After about three hours in the air, the C-130 had reached their drop point. The SEALs rose from their seats, hooked up their oxygen tanks, and then dropped for more than 20,000 feet into the 40-knot wind. After only a few seconds of free fall, the operators had already reached 120 miles per hour, Jesus. a speed which is normally achieved by competitive athletes in optimal conditions. Despite the absurd Jesus, wind situation, man. the SEALs managed to land semi-cohesively with a few runaways who were dragged across the savannah for hundreds of yards before separating from the parachute. Holding security for each other, the sailors put on their combat gear and wrapped up their chutes. From now on, they had to walk several miles through the more than 100 degree hot Somali night. After nearly an hour of silent marching, the sailors reached their last cover before irreversibly committing to the assault. They were now only 500 meters from the pirate camp. Along the way, they had changed direction several times to always have the wind in their faces, eliminating any possibility of being spotted early. Oh, wow. Every little Pretty small. detail counted when it came to sneaking as close as possible to the enemy. A hostage rescue differs from normal combat mission in that the hostage's life is even more important than fighting the enemy. The SEALs would literally run through machine gun fire if it meant they could save Jessica. Their goal was to... It's actually unreal what they go through, right? Like, like listening to these stories, and I'm seeing a couple of these now, what these SEAL team uh, soldiers do is actually unreal. It's really, Remain it's crazy. Detected for as long as possible, then speed was of the essence. As the 24 warriors began to move again. And it's actually true, like, it, it's actually so crazy to think, like, I believe every word of that, that they would run through machine gun fire to save her, to get the hostage. They actually the would. The longest hour of their crazy. lives was about to begin. They had long been within earshot of the pirates, and only night's darkness kept them from the attention of enemy guards. As if in slow motion, one foot was silently placed forward, the weight shifted, and only then followed the next foot. An experienced SEAL named Justin Sheffield led the group. At his hand signal, the operators spread out far to the left and right to bring as many rifles forward as possible without walking into others' field of fire. Uh. Snipers positioned themselves on the outer flanks and monitored their comrades' actions. As the sailors moved forward in perfect unison, they could watch through their thermal scopes as the enemy sentries slowly became anxious and woke the other pirates. The SEALs quickened their pace, still perfectly steady. Sheffield aimed his so laser cool. at one of the Somali guards, and without having to say anything, his comrades did the same. The infrared beam was completely invisible to the pirates without night vision, but they said- Oh, wait, when he said aim laser, the guy, I thought, I thought the pirate would be able to see it, but it's a laser only seen with night vision. All right, cool. Something moving in the darkness. With a loud clack, they racked their heavy PKM machine guns and got into position. The pirates pointed their weapons roughly in the direction from which they heard the sounds. The SEALs increased their pace once again, now less concerned with noise discipline right. than with closing the distance to the hostages before all hell broke loose. With a deafening noise, the pirates' machine gun kicked off and fired deadly 7.62 millimeter rounds at the operators, followed by several AK-47 assault rifles. The snipers had been waiting for just this moment and almost immediately silenced the enemy machine guns before seeking new targets. With surgical precision, the Navy SEALs returned fire while simultaneously fighting their way forward to find Jessica. In a similar hostage rescue, French Special Forces failed to overwhelm the hostiles quickly enough, resulting in the execution of the hostage. Each of the SEALs was wait, quickly... Wait, wait. In a similar hostage rescue, French Special Forces failed to overwhelm the hostiles quickly enough, resulting in the execution of the hostage. Oh, wow. So a French team did this before and they wasn't quick enough to get there and then the hostage got asked okay yes yeah, so they, they they understand this they they know that that can actually happen so they gotta be quick
each of the SEALs was prepared wow. to do anything to avoid just that. Right. The hundreds of hours on the shooting range under simulated stress conditions paid off when they spotted two pirates with AKs standing right over Jessica, who was crouched on the ground. Sheffield and another SEAL broke away from the formation and both made sure these pirates never kidnapped anyone again with accurate shots. When Sheffield saw the American's bright face, he dove on top of her in the ongoing firefight, shielding her from the enemy crossfire with his wow. own body. More SEALs joined in, and within seconds, the teacher was protected by multiple layers of the Amazing. world's best warriors. Although the operators themselves all had wives and children, they put the hostage's life above their own. Right, yeah. Meanwhile, another comrade had taken care of Paul Thisted, protecting him from any- Yeah, I was gonna say, what about the guy? <laughs> I was thinking, right, they got Jessica, and I was like, I was waiting for it. I was like, um, what about the guy? They're going to get the guy as well, or, or no, we're just leaving him. Fire as well. Comrade had taken care of Paul Thisted, protecting uh, him from enemy fire as well. Nice. After all nine pirates were neutralized and the gunfire stopped, Sheffield put Jessica on his shoulders and sprinted out of the pirate camp as far away from any danger as possible. Amazing. The other SEALs formed a human shield around the two, ready to resume the fight at any moment. After running as far as his feet would carry him after this energy-sapping battle, Sheffield dropped Jessica off. Pararescue jumpers, the U.S. Air Force's specialized rescue force, tended to the American woman, who still couldn't believe she had just been rescued by her countrymen. I was wondering why we were seeing a guy down on the floor then. As she anxiously like, asked, shot? what if more come? more could come sheffield coldly replied we are seal team six we will kill anyone who tries to harm you now that's so badass you get that response you're like okay <laughs> okay i'm fine she was visibly reassured by that convincing answer of the bearded warrior who had just rescued her from the worst situation of her life after the Amazing. SEALs blew up the Pirates Arms Depot, they still had to march to the landing zone of the exfiltration helicopter. Whenever a suspicious noise was heard somewhere, or reports of enemies came in over the radio, it took only a few seconds for Jessica to find herself under a layer of Navy SEALs trying to protect her with their own bodies. Fortunately, however, there was no more fighting, and the American, accompanied by the SEALs, ran independently to the Black Hawk that would fly her to freedom. Amazing. Behind her lay three months of captivity among heavily armed pirates, during which she could never be sure that she would live to see the next day. The selfless efforts of the men of SEAL Team 6 had finally saved her. As she reflected on the last few months, one of the soldiers on board knelt beside Jessica, looked her in the eye, handed her a beautifully folded American flag and said, oh, wow. welcome home, Jessica. For those who have made it this far, beautiful. thanks for watching. Amazing video. Really enjoyed that. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it as well. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. If you guys did enjoy, make sure you leave a thumbs up, subscribe for more content. I'll see you all in the next video. Peace.